I'd like to spend a few minutes and talk about um, flying logic diagrams, which are associated with developing effects-based planning theory of constraints diagrams. Uh, initially, Christine Capra had sent me a note as she was working through the Kuma material, indicating that she was um, having difficulty resolving the difference between the Kumu maps and the kinds of maps she was used to developing in Flying Logic. So she sent me this this uh, Thinking with Flying Logic document, which is actually supplied as an external reference that you can, that there's a link to it. The idea is that that through a number of defined relationships, a causal map is developed based upon a number of different kind of, of connections. This particular diagram, which is on page 33 of, of the Thinking with Flying Logic document, simply indicates that, that based upon this intermediate effect and this precondition, the, this undesirable effect results. Or based upon this precondition and this undesirable effect, or this precondition and this undesirable effect, this undesirable effect occurs. Now, if you'd seen the first version of this video, the reason that this is version two is that I had initially done this and left out the the and connectors. And Stefan Wazalewski pointed out that they were they were actually essential because the assumption here is that the relationship between this influence and this influence is or, so that this influence or this influence is sufficient to cause this undesirable effect. So I went back and defined a connector to put in here. Now the way that I did this was I first established a set of types for all of these different um, influences that were defined in the Flying Logic document, and then when I created, well, if you look at the the perspective for this, you'll see that for an element type of goal, there's one color. For an element type of um, intermediate effect, there's another color. So each one of these um, different colors had its own type defined, so that when I created the individual elements they were they were assigned a type which determined what color that they were that way the you know the the individual elements are of a different shape than they are in flying logic though the colors uh, and the the legend provided pretty much gives you the same sense of of what you end up with from the the diagram in Flying Logic. So I found that the to recreating the, the diagram was was pretty straightforward. Now there are several different types of diagrams to find in the Flying Logic document. The effects-based planning is one of them and it has its own set of colors. There's also a conflict resolution diagram which has a different set of labels and colors which were also defined with with types in the same way and so this is the diagram that's on page 46 of that manual and it's this one I had to go ahead and define an or connector so that because this is solution or want are preconditions for this particular need and this need or this need will uh, result in this common objective. So probably the a, a good takeaway here is that if you if you run into a diagram type somewhere, and and there are tons of them, uh, especially if you take Scott Page's uh, um, modeling course, um, you could probably find a way to implement that diagram in Kumu as opposed to, you know, I, I personally would prefer not to have to use a half a dozen different environments to do different kinds of applications. 
And I also have a, a real preference for web-based applications because it makes it so much easier to to share them with other people once they're created and get comments back on them. So you should find it relatively easy to take a different diagram form that's that's used for some particular intent and f and find a way to craft an equivalent of it in Kumu. So, hope you found this useful, informative, and I'll see you in another video shortly.